$480,000 from cigarettes, $360,000 a year from swimming pools, but we don't shut the country down for that. So Oprah's doctors, as I like to call them, Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil, have been on Fox News this week just spewing some ridiculous BS. So I'm going to show you both of these clips. Actually, there's, there's several clips here. Uh, and it, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it it really shows you that you should maybe should not trust television doctors, um, and maybe they're just playing up to Fox News and their audience. But clearly, this I think it should have an impact on their careers. And people, if anybody still trusts these people, maybe it's time to question that. So first up, let me show you, uh, Doctor Oz. Doctor Oz, help us. Well, first, we need our mojo back. Let's start with things that are really critical to the nation where we think we might be able to open without getting into a lot of trouble. I tell you, schools are a very appetizing opportunity. Uh, I just saw a nice piece in The Lancet arguing that the opening of schools may only cost us 2 to 3 percent in terms of total mortality. And, you know, that's any life is a life lost. But to get every child back into a school where they're safely being educated, being fed uh, and making the most out of their lives with a the theoretical risk in the backside, uh, it might be a trade off some folks would consider. We need to get industry back, supply lines. I mean, things that we can do without putting the nation at risk. All right. Schools are an appetizing opportunity. <laughs> so appetizing that we could we could risk two to three percent of our students. It's okay if they die. Because what really matters here is that schools are an appetizing opportunity and we gotta put kids back in school. How do you justify this? You are he is admitting here, yes, we are risking thousands of people's lives, at least thousands, at the very least, likely millions. Putting kids back in school, but it's a great idea because we got to get back to normal. Like, what's the actual argument here? This is somebody who is a surgeon. Like, Dr. Oz, uh, compared to Dr. Phil, actually knows a little bit more about medicine, still makes a claim like this. Now, I think he ended up realizing how stupid this was because uh, the next day he came out and appeared to apologize. <laughs> so... Watch uh, how he responded here. I've realized my comments on risks around opening schools have confused and upset people, which was never my intention. I misspoke. As a heart surgeon, I spent my career fighting to save lives in the operating room by minimizing risks. At the same time, I'm being asked constantly, how will we be able to get people back to their normal lives? To do that, one of the important steps will be figuring out how do we get our children safely back to school? We know for many kids, school is a place of security, nutrition, and learning that is missing right now. These are issues we are all wrestling with, and I will continue looking for solutions to beat this virus. Okay, here he says he misspoke. I wish people would just say they said something dumb. Just admit you said something dumb. I've said dumb things before, and I will say when I've said something dumb. This was dumb. You didn't misspeak. You clearly said something that was stupid and harmful. And as he discussed here, he is a he's an actual doctor, unlike the one we're, we're going to get to in a minute. He's an actual doctor. He should know better. So a lot of this, I feel like it's it's the audience that they're speaking to. They realize they're on Fox News. They realize they're on a conservative network. They, re they realize Fox News is discussing all the time about opening up the economy again. So they're speaking to that audience without really thinking about what they're what they're actually saying here. Now, let me um let me go to Dr. Phil. This one I I'm gonna argue is worse. So I got two clips from Dr. Phil here. Let me first start with uh, this one. So he's on Laura Ingram's show on on Fox News. Question from Don. What can people do to avoid confrontation with other members of the household since everyone is forced to stay home together? Dr. Phil might be last question. You know, that's a tough thing. You've really got to give each other space. And it and I mean space mentally, emotionally, physically. And before you judge somebody, you need to realize you're probably a jerk too. So just back off and give everybody some space. This will end soon. We probably shouldn't have ever started this, but just realize there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We need to get out of this and get back to work. Major depressive disorder costs $210 billion a year in America, and we're wow. feeding it now when we don't need to be. Okay. Now, some of the advice there is 
sort of obvious and I don't disagree with it. Yeah, space is good. If people, if you're living with, I don't know, like roommates and they're getting on your nerves. Yeah, if you have your own separate room, stay in your room sometimes, give yourself space. Of course, that makes sense. Of course, depression is a huge issue. And of course, people staying inside is 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 uh, only adding to it. But that doesn't mean, as he said there, this thing shouldn't have even started to begin with. Or we have to get back to normal as soon as possible. No, th that's not how you actually deal with the pandemic. Because then you are directly putting people's lives in danger. So yes, depression sucks. Many people have it. Many more are now suffering from it because they're stuck indoors. But... Does that mean that you should now expose millions of people to potentially getting this virus and dying because of it? Like, there's no there's no logic here. Let me show you one more clip from this appearance. And uh, he just goes on with some insanity, including misreporting some data. 250 people a year die from poverty. And the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools. But we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this. And the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed so this is what conservatives are often trying to do with, with the argument in terms of trying to uh their argument being that we should get the economy running again get back out there get back to work their argument is that well these people die from uh, car accidents people die from other other uh serious issues so because of that because we don't shut the country down because of those deaths, well, then how is this any different? Well, are car accidents contagious? <laughs> like, if you get into a car accident, are then all the other cars around you also going to get into car accidents? No, it doesn't work like that. This, the reason why people are forced to stay home and the economy is shutting down is because you have to stay home to get rid of the pandemic, to get rid of this virus. The virus spreads between people. It is incredibly contagious, even when you don't show any symptoms. How do you compare that to a car accident, which, by the way, are, are being made safer and safer every year? So it's not like nothing was done about cars. No, they try to make it, them as safe as possible. But again, car accidents are not contagious. This virus is. There is a clear difference there. And even apart from that stupid argument, of course, some of those facts weren't even right. The idea that 360 people, or 360,000 people, Americans, uh, die in pools each year, that should be obvious on its face that that's not the real number. 3,600 Americans die in pools each year, not 360,000. Um, and adding to that here, very important point from uh, Shannon Watts, Dr. Phil has a doctorate in psychology. He is not a medical doctor. He's not even licensed uh, licensed to practice psychology. Let me go a little more into that. Um, there is a fantastic breakdown here from Rebecca uh, Mackay. She is a novelist, a Pulitzer and National Book Award finalist. She has the breakdown here on Dr. Phil and uh, him not being a doctor. So she tweets out, Hi, I'm going to tell you some stuff about Dr. Phil and save you a trip to Wikipedia. One, he is not a medical doctor. He has a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of North Texas. Two, but he is no longer licensed to practice in any state. Three, why? Well, in 1988, the Texas State Board of, of Examiners of Psychologists determined that he had hired a former patient without proper separation between termination of therapy and the, initi and the initiation of employment. Four, but wait, there's more. The patient was also the patient also made claims of inappropriate contact initiated by Dr. Phil. This was kind of dropped from the case, but it's, you know, interesting to note. Five, he was brought up on ethics charges for having an inappropriate non-physical relationship with the patient in 1989. Six, and in 2008, for practicing psychology without a professional license or certification. Seven, and also for violating doctor-patient confidentiality regarding Britney Spears. Eight, he surrendered his Texas license in 2006 and has never held a license to practice psychology in any other state since 2006. Nine, 
Despite not being a medical doctor, he started selling weight loss shakes in 2003. <laughs> I remember that, by the way. The idea that Dr. Phil was selling weight loss shakes. <laughs> the name of the shakes was Shape It Up, Woo Woo. <laughs> 10. Because it's illegal to practice psychology without a license, his TV guests have to sign paperwork saying they are not... Uh, so, sorry. Have to sign paperwork saying they are only receiving advice. 11. In other words, he's an, he's an entertainer, maybe even a skilled one, but he's not a doctor. He's not even a licensed psychologist anymore. He's definitely not an epidemiologist. He has to, his guests have to sign a paper saying they are only receiving advice because he is not a doctor. Yet he is able to pretend to be a doctor on television. His show can be called Dr. Phil. People refer to him as Dr. Phil. He is not a doctor. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, I, 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 he's at least not a doctor in the way that he pretends to be. 